Well, um, had the vet out for whiskey today because last month at our last horse show, um, we had some issues with him kicking out, which was really unusual. Um, so we were scheduled to be going to another show, uh, the Best Little Derby in Nampa, um, in just a week from now. So my appointment that was originally for a health certificate for him to be able to travel turned into a lameness exam. Prior to getting this appointment, I had a gal come out and do some body work with him and she thought that it looked like his um, discomfort was isolated to like the stifle or hip area, uh, potentially the hock, uh, which I knew we've had problems with in the past. Um, so with this vet appointment, um, I took, gave her that information and of course she found quickly through a lameness exam that he was uh, one positive on the left hind stifle. Um, so that sparked some exploratory work. First we did um, some ultrasounds of the stifles and then with not finding anything uh, particularly off looking in the ultrasound she decided she wanted to x-ray. Also with the x-ray not finding anything hugely indicative um, arthritically or anything of that nature she took another image of the hawks um, to rule out that that wasn't what we're looking at again and didn't find anything major going on in the hawks. So the next thing was to nerve block the stifle. So she did that and um, initially we didn't see a huge difference but as more time went and the longer that that fluid or whatever it is that she puts in there um, finally could reach some of the, di the deeper areas of the stifle um, we started seeing significant improvement. So um, with that all said, uh, diagnosis was um, the um, cruciate ligament uh, within the stifle, so soft tissue damage. Um, to what extent, we don't know unless we did another um, kind of surgical type investigation in there. I can't remember what the name of that uh, procedure was. Um, but my vet recommended um, to start a series of three shockwave treatments. So he got the first one today. In three weeks time, he'll get another one. At that time, he'll also get ProStride, um, which I have actually done quite a bit of research on myself because I was interested in it with the hawk problems he was having. Um, so then after the ProStride, we'll get a third treatment of the um, shockwave. That'll be six weeks from now. So for the next 30 days, he's on stall rest. Um, he does not have any rehab schedule yet. Um, until she does the second shockwave. So at that time, then we'll add hand walking for 15 minutes. Um, so that's about three weeks from now. So um, beyond that, beyond the third shockwave treatment, um, we'll reevaluate, see how he's looking. There's a potential for him to have R&R &R, um, for four to six months. So with that being said, it is disappointing. I mean, we got we did one show this year. There's a potential that we could finish um, with the low roller in Idaho at the end of October. Um, but you know, it's just it's a bummer. Aside from obviously my horse being uncomfortable and injured, um, you know, we practice and wait all winter to finally get to do what we love to do, and um, it's cut short before we really got started. But it is more important to me um, to have longevity with my horse and not push him to go to a couple of shows. Um, I'd rather get this fixed before it's a chronic issue. And, and maybe we'll be able to finish out the season in the fall. You know, if we take care of this now, um, the f four to six months is, is kind of a... That's a guesstimate at this point. And she didn't say that that is what we're looking at. We'll see how he looks after the six weeks with the shockwave treatment and then um, evaluate from there. So now I've made my 
second stall in the shed row um, whiskeys. I moved Chica over from here um, because I'm in the process of putting in a third stall on the other side of that wall. So that wall is going to get pushed out and I'm going to have another panel there. And I didn't want whiskey to be in a stall on stall rest with two of these panels on either side. I wanted him to have more stability of a solid wall. Uh, it's easier for me to keep bedding in here and less chances for him to get a leg underneath, um, you know, while he's confined more. So what I did is I took down the center that divided the two paddocks. And at this point, Chica just gets to have uh, both paddocks. So she'll have one large one now um, until, until Whiskey can come out. And that allows them to be like this. They can still stay nosy. He won't be lonely. She might as well have the space um, available since Wiz doesn't need it right now. The one thing that I'm really bummed out about for Whiskey is here in about a month we can start using the fields. And I'm really bummed out that there's a potential that he's going to miss all of summer turnout. I just I feel bad. Like, you know, you wait all winter without any turnout available here because it just gets too wet. And then finally we're going to get to that point now and he doesn't get to go enjoy it. But, but I mean, really after the shockwave there's a chance that he'll be better um, or at least won't need the full four to six months of rehab. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, at least he gets to be in here with a friend and have a stall. I'm grateful that I'm able to really quickly set something up like this to accommodate for an injured horse. Sometimes it's nice to just operate with these movable panels to make things happen in a snap.